I wanted to show you a little tool that I built for um, building 3D levels in Godot. And in order to explain how it works, first I will show you the workflow that I'm using. It's actually one of the most common workflows. I have a little scene here with a few rocks. These are actually the high polys. I bake them down to low poly meshes. Um, they all share one single texture and material. I also created collision shapes and I exported them in the recommended way for Godot, which is I parented the collision shape to the visual shape and I added the prefix of call only to the collision shape and that way it will export as just the collision mesh. And that imported here, if you take a look, looks like this. It's the root of the scene and the few rocks, each one's containing static body and a collision shape. So I decided to go with a little bit of an easier route here. So I just imported it as multiple scenes plus materials and that gave me this few rocks that you can see here. Generally it would be a good idea and I will do this now to just restart transform, reset transform to zero zero and I'll do it very fast. This one is not reset either. Save, save and for transform reset to zero. So yeah, these are my meshes. All of them are following the same principle. Mesh, collider, collision shape. Um, and in a scene, I have just a light and a camera. I'll just create a little place here. Let's see something like, I don't know. Let's try something, see what we can do. Uh, a little rocky wall or something. Let's rotate this one. And this one. Add it here. Take this one to create some sort of a platform. Oh, come on. And yeah. You can see how it's going, where I'm going with this. You can just adjust it, add some extra ones, and that way you can build your level. That's how actually most games do it. But in our case, it will lead to a specific problem, which is that if I play this scene and check my debugger, I come to my monitors and I can see that I already have 40 draw calls, which is quite a lot, especially considering how small of a scene that is. A common solution to do to deal with this would be to actually use multi-mesh instances and just merge all the same meshes into a single multi-mesh instance, but that has its own set of challenges. First off, it would require some sort of an altering tool something like uh, um, there was a multi-mesh merger, if I'm not wrong. Um, it's a very useful add-on. But even with that, there is a big disadvantage of multi-mesh instances, which is that they do not have the possibility to use um, any sort of big GI, like white maps or um, GI probe. Uh, that's simply because they cannot have unique uh, white map UVs at this point and that was not working for me so i had to look for another solution and i managed to find one which is to just merge meshes that's the way unreal engine does it and it's kind of working similarly to the multi-mesh instance but it allows you to have um white maps and stuff and just generally uvs um the way you do this is just you come here and you can add uh, 
mesh pointer node. That's a custom node I created. Add it somewhere. And on all the children, all the meshes that you that you want to merge as children, should remember that they all need to share a material. And once you select the mesh merger and click merge meshes, it actually already merged them all into a single mesh. And if you play, you can just double check, come here, come to the monitors, and it's already six draw calls from 40. It was quite a big improvement. Um, all the original meshes are just hidden, not deleted, and that's because very often you may want to tweak some stuff. So, for example, you can just clean the meshes and that will unhide all of your child meshes. You can add some more, I don't know, to some stuff, whatever you want to do, come back and merge them again. And here actually I increased the amount, but still because there's just one mesh, they will still be, okay, monitors, just six draw calls. Um, another thing that you may find is a problem here is that your original meshes had collisions, but sadly here it does not. The collisions are still active from here, but you would ideally want to delete these ones in the end, so you don't have duplicates of the meshes. So a solution you can do is to simply add a static body and add it anywhere in the scene. It doesn't matter, but in my case, I'll just add it as a child of the mesh merger and assign it as a collision parent. And once you do this, and if you, once this one is not empty if you watch the meshes again it has created all these shapes as children of the static body now all these children are still in the scene and you may not want them for the final version um, but if you don't want to delete them at this point because you may want to tweak it more you can actually use this check which is delete child meshes on play that way, they will no longer interfere when you play it will just, you can see, they're no longer in the scene. But when you stop playing, you can still use them if you want to tweak your scene and adjust it and all that stuff. Now, a final thing to keep in mind, once you merge the meshes, they still don't have a second UV, but you can simply go here, unwrap UVs, and voila, we have nicely packed UV maps for ready to be white mapped or whatever you need them. Um, that's how it works. I think I should mention this if you don't know it. It's kind of the same with as multi mesh. Um, once you merge all these meshes, it's not a problem so much to have one higher poly mesh instead of a bunch of smaller poly meshes. Yeah, in fact, it's much better because of the draw calls, as we, as we mentioned. But um, there is a there is another thing that you need to keep in mind is that well, since it's just one mesh, even if you see a tiny part of it, it's still rendering the full thing. And you need to be mindful about what meshes you merge. So try to merge meshes that are close together, that would usually be visible together. Don't merge just everything that shares the same material into one huge mesh, because that may actually backfire and make your scene performing worse and not better. So keep that in mind. And yeah, if you have any questions about it, please let me know. I will try to package it and I don't know, maybe I need to make a little bit of bug testing, but if everything works fine, I will try to upload the link uh, maybe in the description of the video, but if not, you can check my Twitter, it should be uploaded very soon. I hope you find it useful, and yeah, again, if you have any questions, just 
let me know. I guess that's all. Bye.